Hello everyone, my name is Ali Shayek. Uh, we are on the wrong slide. My name is Ali Shayek, and uh, at, at the moment I'm doing my PhD at University College Dublin in Ireland. Uh, Solids for Foam Alchemist is our event today. We will have a look into what Solids for Foam is and how we can develop our own code using this software package. The main contributor to Solids for Foam is Philip Cardiff, the lead of our research group at UCD. Uh, so, you know the, well about the logos on the uh, bottom. Solids for Foam Tensor Fields is uh, actually the Open Foam Training Initiative we started in UCD, UCD and Open Foam Workshop. Okay, let's quickly start about the history of solid mechanics generally in open foam. Uh, it goes back to the dates that the Mirzich and Muzaffaria started uh, adopting finite volume methods uh, for solid displacement applications. Uh, don't worry about these slides, I will share all of them with you at the, uh, at the end of the workshop, not at the end of the today, because I need to polish, uh, actually do some final polishes before sharing them. So in the very first paper, which introduced open foam, that architecture, uh, Weller and co-workers uh, introduced a plate hole problem. Actually, they benchmarked their method, their implementation for a plate hole problem and showed that uh, the method uh, implemented by the, the method introduced by people before them, like the Mirzic, can be implemented in open form as well. So basically, it, it was showing that finite volume method can be suitable for solids. In terms of uh, open form community, uh, the basic software developed by Weller and co workers moved forward to some community contributions like FSI4. Uh, it was in Foam Extend 3 maybe, or before, and uh, some other contributions also came in, like uh, Extend Bazaar. Finally, all of those contributions led to Solids for Foam. Solids for Foam uh, actually is a super extension of the previously developed uh, solid applications inside Open Foam, plus uh, uh, a huge number of solid models and solution procedures which have not developed before. So solids for foam can be used for uh, solid simulation and FSI simulation and of course fluid only simulation. Well just for your reference FSI if you, it is your first time of hearing the word it is fluid solid interaction. In some problems you don't you need to solve both for fluid and for solid. For example you want to simulate a full heart of a human, then the heart itself is solid, the blood inside is fluid, and you need to capture both physics, both solid uh, and fluid to, to simulate the whole physics of the problem. That was the intro. In order to use solids for foam, you need to basically install it. Installation is so easy, I will show you at the moment. Uh, you just need to access to solidsforfoam.com and when you do, there is a header called installation guide and depending on the platform you are, you are planning to work on, whether it is Linux, whether it is Windows, uh, you have different, kind of a bit different instructions. So uh, I'm going to do that very quickly just to show you because, uh, well, in, in this uh, session our purpose is just training. So uh, we make it as hands-on as possible. You, may, you, you might be able to follow me at the mo uh, if, if you have your laptops on your desks. If not, that's fine. Well, yeah, the quality of sound didn't change, thankfully. I just want to show you uh, the website. Well, thankfully, I have it opened. Maybe I increase the font a bit. Yeah, it's readable now. Well, as I said, 
you go to the installation guide and you will see the instructions here. However, I'm going to go to GitHub and uh, do the instructions instead of reading them out. So where is Solids for Foam? Solids for Foam Git. Uh, Yeah, the way we do it, actually the way we install it normally is you click on code, then, well, uh, people who are new to GitHub uh, may not have set up their SSH keys, so I would suggest that if it is your first time of downloading the package, you can simply go to HTTPS and copy the address and then go back to your terminal, no matter which terminal you are working on, you're, whether you're on Mac or Windows or Linux. At the moment, I'm on Ubuntu 22.04. Uh, Just increase the size. Just let me change my directory. Okay, I copied some address. And what I do in my terminal is git clone the address. What happens is that solids for phone will be started to be downloaded. So the next thing we do, just for now, assume that it is downloaded. I have already done that. When you when the downloading is finished. When the downloading is finished, you have a file called solids for foam, like what you see now. So you, you simply cd into that, change the directory into solids for foam, and you will end up with a directory structure like this. So this is the, actually this is what is contained in solids for foam repository. Pretty much similar to the directory structure of open foam itself, you can see that the main directories are application, source, and third party. Well, you always have tutorials as well, just uh, to showcase the capabilities of the software. Well, there are another files as well, but the main ones I introduced you to them. Uh, the next thing to do after doing the git clone is the second as the last and the last comment, which is executing all w make so it is simply dot slash all w make if i press enter it will start to being compiled however i won't because i don't want uh, this new compilation to mix up with my previous installed version so when you do it you have access to solids for foam how do i check it i type solids and press tab and it's auto completed it means that solids for foam is available for example if the page, well, uh, show some instructions how to use it and this things. Uh, okay, now I have solids for foam installed. Let's go back to the slides. The first, the first case we are going to get into that is how to uh, run a very simple solid simulation case. So, if you are open foam users, uh, it's not that different from an ordinary open form case like cavity case or simple form case or any other one. So uh, just in order for myself to have the things organized, I have set an OFW19 directory. I go to this one and write, okay. Uh, I have an empty directory and I want to start uh, running a the so-called narrow T section case. So uh, this, this narrow T section case already exists in uh, all, uh, Solids for Form tutorials. I will copy that. Maybe I made my life a bit hard by changing these directories. However, okay, it's cool now. Uh, solids. So uh, what I'm doing now. So remember that we had a solid when we did git clone we had in, uh, we had a solids for form we had a solids for form directory in which uh, a number of 
uh, directories exists, including tutorials. Inside tutorials, it might be a good idea if I go there. Inside tutorials, yeah, I'm already there. Inside tutorials, you can see, uh, uh, well, for this, inside tutorials, you have fluid cases, fluid solid interaction cases, <coughs> solids and fluid solid inter interaction cases using precise coupling package. Uh, which actually the very next session is about precise, so I do invite you to attend that one as well. So in, in the tutorials, uh, you have this, all of these uh, tutorials available to you. Now I'm inside the solids one. Inside the solids, I'm going to run simply, uh, so let's choose a, so in, inside the solid, again, you see that you have many choices, as I, as I told, as I said, uh, you have access to many, many uh, apply, applied uh, physical models, like, for example, elastoplasticity models, hyperelasticity models, the simplest one, the linear elasticity models, and so on. If your physics involves uh, thermal as well, the heat transfer as well among solids, uh, you have thermoelasticity, and in, a, in the very last version, which was released, I think, two days ago, you have if I'm not wrong, it is uh, thermofluid elasticity, which means you can have fluid solid interaction, including heat transfer in both domains. So, uh, yeah, what we, we were planning to do a very simple uh, test case, which was linear elasticity. So, I will copy linear so maybe if I change my size of my terminal it would be handier so uh, from solids for four tutorials solids, linear elasticity, and I'm looking for the T-junction, uh, the narrow T-junction, yeah, narrow T-member actually, best case. And then I CD to that, narrow T-member. So if we have a look into the directory tree of this problem, we see that like any normal open form case, you have a zero. However, in zero, you have the uh, unknown, with the unknown, the initial conditions or boundary conditions for the unknown, which is D in this formulation. In our formulation, D, the, the total displacement is uh, the unknown. Uh, then inside the constant, well, pretty much similar to any other open form test case, you have the poly mesh, which saves your mesh. Physics pro well, the only difference is in uh, the physics properties. Uh, if we have a look inside uh, constant physics properties, you can see that inside physics properties, you, ch you decide, you tell the solids for foam solver uh, which physics you are going to solve for. Is it fluid, is it a fluid solid interaction, or is it a solid only? Uh, that's that. What else? We have mechanical properties, which is more than business quiet, uh, describes itself. We open it. Mechanical properties. So, plane stress, our case is not. Our uh, material is steel. In this case, steel is just an arbitrary name. You can change it to anything. Then, the type is linear elastic. The data you need to provide is the density, the Young's modulus, and nu. So we are pretty much done. The, the last thing is solid properties. As I, as I said, uh, well, as, as we saw in the zero directory, we have the displacement as our unknown. That's because of our 
formulation of momentum equation. When it comes to solids, the momentum, the equation uh, of momentum can be formulated in a number of a few number of different ways. It can be in terms of uh, total displacement or it can be in terms of displacement increment, which means uh, in, in every time step, your unknown might be uh, the current location of the points compared to the very beginning of the solution, or it can be the current position of the points compared to the very last known position. This second description is called the updated Lagrangian, whereas the first one is the total Lagrangian. So if we have a look inside constant solid properties, we'll see that our formulation here is linear geometry to total displacement coefficients. Uh, well, you, you're familiar with how to specify the keywords in open form dictionaries when uh, a few sub dictionaries like here. So uh, just, just for your reference, the file I opened, as you know, is called a dictionary. All the files, all the setting files are called dictionaries. For example, in our case, solid properties. Inside any dictionary, you have some keywords which own some other parameters in, uh, included in curly braces. Those keywords are normally called sub-dictionaries. When some sub-dictionaries have common uh, parameters and common values, common key value pairs, then they are included in this format, like uh, both linear geometry total displacement coefficient and UNS linear geometry coefficients have the same sub-dictionary. So, uh, what, what we specify in, the, in this sub-dictionary is uh, the number of iterations of the number of iterations needed to solve a uh, momentum equation based on the formulation that is specified by the keyword. So we normally don't change it unless we have uh, problems. Uh, well, depends on how well the problem converges. So we are done with constant subdirectory. There is nothing new in system. You normally have, uh, well, it's worth it to open control dict as well. Well, uh, the keywords are like normal open form uh, case. There is nothing new in control dict. The compose part in case you want to run your problem in uh, parallel. Just a short note that if, uh, in, ca in case you want to use the block structure uh, decomposition, then uh, as f uh, to, to the best of my knowledge, I'm not sure about this last version. Uh, I haven't checked it yet. So far, uh, the block structure was not supported uh, by parallel run. If we scheme, you know it, how it, it says how to decompose different terms in the partial differential equations. For example, since uh, our momentum formulation is in terms of displacement, we have the second or the, uh, we have the second derivatives of uh, actually displacement, which is the first order of the velocity in the equation. So when we specify how to use those things, how to discretize those terms, F is solution, pretty much similar to fluids, nothing new there. And yeah, that's it. Uh, so if uh, you open the all run, you will see that uh, there are a few, uh, actually, basically, a file called solids for foam, uh, a, a file called uh, a file called solids for foam script is loaded at the uh, at the beginning. Then a few pre-processing is done, uh, just uh, to make sure that since it, well. Just uh, for your reference, open form is uh, solids for form is compatible with the uh, all major branches of open form, including ESI, open form foundation, and form extend. However, uh, the, the feature of this, the very last version of solids for form is that it's compatible with the very last ESI version. In terms of open form foundation, the last one that is fully it is fully compatible with is open form nine. Well, and form extend is already fine. Uh, so I, I'm not going to get into what uh, 
these pre-processing solids for foam scoop is doing actually it doesn't matter that much it's mostly for uh, keeping the uh, style of the code the two commands that we care about at the moment in this session are very simple commands uh, so since I'm using uh, open form 9 home version it is open form 9 uh, it asks me to put the excuse me Uh, so the when you run block mesh, you need the block mesh dictionary, and uh, normally it is uh, located in in for foam extend cases. It is it is located in constant uh, poly mesh. However, in open foam uh, foundation version, you need to locate it in system. So that's what I will do. Constant mesh, block mesh is a system, and like mesh and then the, the next command is solids for foam so the error is so apparently the boundary condition is wrong I'll have a look Oh, sorry. Oh, I, I know what happened. Well, uh, the case I ran is just, as I, as I told you, it uh, uses the block coupled discretization method, which is not uh, implemented in foundation version. So to run this case, I need to go to, uh, I need to use form extend version, basically. To do that, I just simply open my So I have my foam extend installed on Docker. So uh, just to remind ourselves, it was uh, solids for foam. I mean, the, the, it was uh, the, the case we are planning to run was solids for foam, tutorials, solids, narrow or linear, then narrow here. So again, block mesh, and then solids for foam. So it should be fast. At the same time, I can open PowerView. So I go to the case directory in a different terminal just to uh, just to create an empty file so that the case be readable by Paraview. So uh, it is the case that we are at the moment running in the other terminal. I create so uh, yeah, it is readable I think when uh, you want to open a uh, open phone case using Paraview and not Paraphone if you don't have any file with the extension foam or open foam you, you will have problems uh, opening it so uh, the workaround is that you create an empty file using the command touch touch case.foam is creating a 
empty file with the extension of phone. The name case is just an arbitrary name. Now I have the file and in the other terminal the solution is finished. I just open case.phone. This is the form and apply. So here is our team member. And if I go to the, so basically because it's the steady state problem, uh, we have only, we, only, we don't need to write the iterations. We just need the steady state solution, which is the uh, last time state or the last iteration. Well, to be able to see the displaced points, the new uh, deformed mesh, you need to use a filter, a filter called warp by vector. So I click warp by vector and choose the displacement field, D field. Uh, I know that the fonts are so small, however, is it so small? Can anyone see what well, I'm clicking on in Paraview? Well, my terminal is good, however, Paraview, oh my god. <laughs> so I don't, I don't get good feedback from the end. By the way, there are a lot of free seats in front as well if you want to move. Okay, and then press apply. Well, you actually, you don't see any obvious changes because the displacement is very small. In order to make it visible, I will multiply it by something, for example, by 10. Not yet. Still too small. So let's see how small it is. Oil. Uh, so before this, let's see how the real displacement is large. I'll color it by this. So it's in the order of micrometers. I'll multiply it by 500 then. Yeah, something is shown. Okay, uh, so just uh, now we can see the displacement a bit. I'm apparently I'm skipping the very first time step. So here you you always have skip zero time or not. It is your choice. I just uh, don't skip it to sh to show the initial condition as well. So the initial condition, the steady solution. Of course, the exaggerated steady solution. In the steady solution, you can see too many different fields. For example, the one that we normally care about is the equivalent plastic stress. Uh, in this case, equivalent, equivalent, uh, sorry, equivalent strain, uh, not plastic because our case is just elastic. Equivalent strain here. So uh, that's that. We don't have too much time left, which is very bad. Uh, we are able to do the same thing. Uh, for fluid-solid interaction as well. So uh, the only difference in fluid-solid interaction problems is uh, what, what I will do is uh, copying a fluid-solid interaction case and running that and showing, and I have the case already uh, run and I just show you the results because we are short of time. Where am I? Maybe it was. Yeah. 
just to remind myself. So I know that the other case is uh, a bit lengthy for us to run. Yeah, that's fine. So the, the other case in uh, the uh, solids for form tutorials is, uh, let me just show you here, three solids for form master tutorials. So inside, uh, as we saw before, inside the tutorials, you have tutorials for fluid solids and fluid solid interaction. I'm going to show what's inside fluid solid interaction. Uh, fluid solid interaction this time. So inside inside fluid solid interaction, you have a number of cases. Uh, the one we are going to see is the flex flexible dam break. I have I have already copied it to somewhere else and run it, and here is the results. Flexible dam break. So uh, just let's have a look inside uh, the directories before uh, we show we see the results. Inside zero, this time you don't have the fields. Inside the zero, you have two directories, which means two regions. You have fluid and solid, and then inside the fluid. You basically expect to have the fields that are needed to solve for the fluid domain. In this case, we have a two-phase fluid and solid. So it is a two-phase fluid solid interaction. Uh, a normal interform case, just for your reference, interform, as you know, is an, uh, a well-known uh, and basic and fundamental uh, multi-phase uh, solver at open form. So in this case, if you want to run a multi-phase uh, simulation using Interform, you basic uh, based on your open form version, you might uh, need to set up a slightly different number of fields. However, in our case, in Open Form 9, you need these fields at your zero. You need to set up initial and boundary condition for these fields for your uh, multi-phase flow and uh, for your solid, the fields you need, as I said, depending on your momentum formulation, is either the displacement or the displacement increment. Solid. So, uh, in this case, our formulation is total Lagrangian, so we only need displacement. Uh, so, you, you got the idea. The, the, the only difference in fluid solid interaction cases is that uh, if I show you constant as well, you will see that we have, instead of having uh, the fields or the settings for everything in one folder, every folder, including zero, including next time steps, constant and system, are divided into two subdirectories, fluid and solid. And every setting is uh, co corresponding to each domain is inside uh, the relevant directory. So constant, for example, Again, inside constant, you have fluid and solid. However, physics properties, as, as we saw before, is where you select whether your physics is solid, fluid, or FSI. And uh, then FSI properties is the file at which you can <coughs> choose uh, the physics of your uh, fluid-solid interaction problem. Well, basically, uh, FSI problems uh, in the uh, in the highest categorization, I would say, is, uh, the, I mean, FSI can be either uh, one way or two way. By one way, we mean uh, you solve for the fluid, and then you expose your solid to the existing forces and the flow of the fluid. Fluid is not get, uh, does not get affected by the solid. However, solid gets affected by the fluid. That's one way. The two way, uh, so that there are different formulations for two-way coupling. Uh, at, at the moment, uh, open form uses uh, solid solid form uses eight can coupling. That's it.
So if, 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 you, if you go through FSI properties, you can see the uh, different keywords. I'm a bit cautious of time. Uh, all other things are already introduced. System is the same. Inside system again, control edict is common. However, uh, and also a few schemes. However, for every solutions, fluid uses simple loop, solid domain uses another loop, so therefore they need different FV solutions. And FV solutions are inside each domain respectively. And when we run the case, so uh, before you run the case, so you saw in the solid case that I uh, created the mesh. Well, I used block mesh for, the, for that case. It can, you can use uh, the, pre -meshing, the, the meshing software of your own interest. Uh, Assume that, we, uh, so th this problem is also set up for block mesh. Uh, but the difference is that this is the FSI problem in solid store form is a multi region problem. And when it comes to running a multi region problem, you need to use the switch region in every command. So in order to run block mesh in this case, so use open form 9. In order, you know, uh, instead of using block mesh, I should say, Block mesh region fluid. And when I do that, uh, if I do that, then uh, the whole simulation might crash. I mean, the, the whole uh, previous simulation may mess up because the addressing of the cells may change. But just to show you, uh, it is block mesh region fluid. And when you do that, you will have your mesh in constant fluid polymesh. And when you do the same thing for solid, block mesh, region, solid, you will end up with your mesh at constant solid polymesh. Uh, and then you run solids for foam. It doesn't need any switch. Uh, in case you want to review these commands, you can simply open the all run existed in the case. And you can see the command we talked about. <clears throat> well, in this special problem, after creating the mesh, you need to set fields as well, because as you saw in the slides, the problem is that you have a column of water and a flexible, a flexible block here. At the moment zero, the dam breaks, the dam vanishes, and water starts flowing uh, and hitting this uh, flexible block, and we want to see the deformation there. We want basically solve for the flow and the solid at the same time. Uh, so to set the water to be only to occupy only this place, you need to run the command set fields. After that, uh, you run solids for foam. So it is set fields, then solids for foam. Just for your reference, when you run set fields, you have a set field dict. So this, this is the dictionary that, you, that is read. And uh, so in this dictionary, we have uh, specified the box, the box where is water. So the field value for a variable called alpha changes and shows that which part of the uh, mesh is occupied by water, which part is occupied by air. After that, we run solids for foam, solids for foam, and finally, uh, we have the results here. Well, this is our case. Again, when it comes to visualization, uh, it is handy to use a, a, to use a filter called extract block. I'm just curious to see if I can increase the fonts.
Well, I'm not sure. So what I do is uh, selecting the, so I can delete the previous cases. Now we have only the uh, flexible dam break case. I click on filter, search for extract block, and choose fluid. And rename it to fluid. And also, for the, for the second time, I select the same filter, <coughs> extract block. This time I select solid. And as you remember from the solid case, in order to see the, the, the deformation of the solid domain, you need to use warp by vector. So I will do that for the solid domain warp by vector and selecting the displacement field as the warper. Now, since we are curious about the displacement of this, so let's have a overall view first and then the, zoom, the focus view. So, maybe it's better that I visualize it using using the cell values instead of the point values so that you can clearly see the boundaries. I think we have only about 20 minutes left. Uh, apart from the time uh, we want to set for Q&A, and feedback. So just another time. That's it. So as you see, it's quite handy to use solids for foam for your problems. So do give it a try. As, as, as uh, I mentioned, we have different uh, solid models, your solid models may be small strain applications, thermoelastic, plastic, and so on. You already know how to find them. One way, one, one simple way is to, ha to uh, have a look at the tutorials. Uh, another way is to just go to solid for from website and see the models there. There is a good documentation. Using the source code uh, is also uh, the, I would say that the original way to do that, which we will get into that very quickly. So in terms of fluid models, you have access to general fluids, general single phase fluids, which is pimple fluid, and also interfluid model for multi-phase. And for fluid cell interaction, interaction, as I mentioned, you have access to one way, two way, and uh, a few others for uh, like uh, narrow shells or uh, and narrow beams and similar similar specific applications. So uh, my, my, my main plan was to actually write a C++ code to uh, solve a solid, displace, solid displacement problem. Uh, I think we can do that, hopefully. We'll do that very fast. You, uh, so I assume that you are new to C++. The simplest C++ code looks like this. You have a file called, called file.c and you have a function called main and any function has an output. The output, this, this keyword shows the uh, type of the output. Here int is a keyword which refers to integer and everything inside the curly brace is the process that function is supposed to do over the inputs. So I'll skip uh, basically over many things. Uh, the way you get a, a code, uh, get a source code compiled is using compiler. Here is an, is an example of G++. So use G++ uh, output this machine code using this source code. 
this dot o uh, is just for ourselves to know it is an object code. It is not human readable. Where, whereas the dot c file, c++ file, which is uh, one of ways to uh, this actually uh, discriminate a C++ file from C file is to use capital C extension instead of small c. So here's, uh, here is how we get the code, comp the code compiled. We, have, we can use many other extensions for C++ code as well. You can have a look at the manuals. This is the, you can, uh, when I share the slides, you can give a try to these codes. Uh, this is the simplest hello or hello world C++ code. If you write it, you compile it, and you run it, you will see hello will be printed out in your terminal. Then what's object, what objects are? So assume that, uh, assume a group of things with uh, similar features. For example, students. So many of us are students, right? right? So students in, in, in this context are a class. Their attributes are, all of us have student numbers. All of us have modules. All of us have library actions. We can borrow books from library and these things. So student number or the modules we have becomes our uh, data. And the, the things that we can do becomes our method in C++ terminology. And then we have objects. Objects are the specific students. So Yanwar, Brian, Jawa, anyone. So this is the concept of class to objects. Because, uh, well, the, the, the reason the author of C++ invented C++ was to translate the, uh, the way we think to programming, to remove any uh, difficulty in that translation. So this is exactly the way we think. Another example, assume the class of circles. All circles have diameter, they have my colors, and you can calculate their uh, areas, their perimeters. So these are their data and their methods. And then you have objects, specific circles. These are objects of those classes. So there is an I, so I will skip over this. This is a, a simple code that shows the difference between object-oriented uh, programming versus the normal procedural programming. In object-oriented programming, uh, you can see the difference, obviously. So on the left, when you want to uh, calculate the area of a circle, you simply, see, you simply say pi multiplied by d squared divided by 4. However, in object-oriented case, you create an object called circle, where circle is the class. And then you have all the methods accessible for this object. In, in our case, uh, our object is called C and C have access to the method area. So C that area calculates the area. So uh, I will skip over these things. Uh, the, the plan, if you had time, the plan was to actually implement that and show that. Then, so we, we saw the object, the, the, the concept of classes and objects, and also we saw how a simple code get compiled in C++. In open form a compilation, uh, is uh, done using WMake, which is an, an application, uh, an, an extension of the existing uh, uh, compilers uh, with having open form data structure in mind. So for open form, actually in the, on the back end, WMake uses G++ or uh, Clang or other, uh, depending on your choice or, or your architecture, depending on whether you are on an ARM processor or on a x 64 processor, it uses uh, different compilers. So that was just to mention the WMAT, the, the way that WMAT uh, works uh, is uh, not that different. It is only different in terms of the, the way that you should, uh, the, the way that you should put your files uh, in, uh, your target directory. Uh, I, I might give an example of that. Actually, we have to, because um, we have to give an example of that. So uh, more examples. So th these are examples. Uh, so after, after WMake, uh, 
we have the idea of inheritance. So assume that uh, semi-circles, uh, well, we, 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 now we are familiar with the idea of, uh, the idea of class. Now, all, all existing, all possible semi-circles have uh, actually common data and attributes with circles. All of the uh, semi-circles can, can have diameter, can have a perimeter, can have a different color, but at the same time, they are no longer circles. They are semi-circles. So uh, having the audio in, in mind, uh, this happens a lot. This happens a lot in the uh, computations as well. Uh, just to give just to give you an idea that uh, this idea is called inheritance, and the way it is implemented, a very a very very simple scenario is shown in this slide, where you, you create a circuit, you, you create a semi-circuit class from a parent class which is circuit. So, what does all of these things have to do with solid store form. Uh, I will tell you in a second. So let's, I think we have 10 minutes only, this is very short. Let's write a C++ code to solve a solid problem, a simple solid displacement problem. Since I have, I think I have already prepared it. So I want I will create a directory, call it solid solver, and inside solid solver. I will write solid solver dot C any open form code or any C code based on the C standard uh, has these structures. They should take both two arguments, arc C and arc V. They are short for arc arc count, the number of arguments and arc values int main int arc c char star arc v uh, so I might skip over them yeah maybe it's not, not a bad idea just to show you what are our objects in uh, a typical physics problem. So we, we talked about the objects in the real world, like, like the students. Now, well, objects in terms of programming. Uh, now, in continuum mechanics, you deal with different objects, different classes. For example, for a heat equation like this, the objects, the temperature itself is an object of the, of the class volume scalar field. The time itself is an object of the class time. The location or the position is an object called mesh and so on. So the, the very concept is uh, used in solids for form as well, where The object we create is a bit simp is is not that easy to be called. So uh, let's create a, an object called solid, and then solve the problem for this object. The object for uh, all, all objects are uh, are physical models in solids for form, regardless of the physics, whether it is uh, fluid solid interaction, solid only or fluid only simulation are of type auto pointer physics model just for your later reference because we are definitely short of time and one time out one hour of time is not suitable for 
delving in all of into these concepts. Auto pointers are uh, a class of smart pointers. If you want to have a look at them later. So basically, we are creating an object. So remember that students, every single student is an object of type student, an object of class student. So you can create models of type auto pointer physics models in solid for form. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, just uh, before that, you need to create an, an arg list object as well. This is just because of the open form structure. So the, fir the first, uh, I would say, physical thing that we create is time. I create time and call it runtime. Runtime. The runtime object to be constructed needs two uh, arguments. The name of the control dict, which is normally control dict, nothing else. And args. And after that, I have this scary object. Auto pointer physics model. Solid. And then the constructor, like you saw above, here you did need two arguments. For an auto pointer physics model object, you need a pointer to a physical model. So maybe it's very vulnerable. So the way, the way I create that argument is using the keyword new. New just create a pointer to the object of type form solid models. In, in this problem, as we saw as we saw earlier in one of the slides, I mentioned that we have a, a quite a few number of solid models. FSI models and fluid models. Here, you were introduced to a number of uh, existing solid models. In this uh, particular problem, I'm gonna use the uh, the total Lagrangian formulation, linear geometrical lean geom total this solid. And this object needs runtime as an as a, as its input. So finally, uh, if you open the basically what what we are going to do is writing a solids for form dot c. When you type solids for form in terminal. We want to see what that code does. Uh, the, thing that, that, the thing that this code does is creating an object like this and then uh, entering a time loop like uh, the one I'm going to show at the moment. Well, maybe it's a good idea for me to continue on this file. So as you see on the, on the right, uh, we created the object, pretty much the same thing on the left-hand side. The left-hand side is a completed version of the right-hand side. After creating the object of auto pointer physics model called solid, we enter a time loop. Inside time loop, uh, inside the time loop, the delta time is set in case uh, the, the delta t is set in case uh, delta t is changing in every iteration, in every time step. Then runtime, which is basically 
the existing time. Progress is one step. And then your object solid, the, the object you just created, your object has a method called evolve. Just remember, you had the method area for a circle. Uh, my plan was to go into the evolve and show you how uh, things going on are on evolve because evolve is actually the engine of the solids for foam. It is where uh, the, the whole simulation, the, the model is selected and the physics, the equation is selected and solved. Uh, afterwards, this, some, 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 at, at the next line, some explicit uh, fields are solved. For example, if you are solving for, for uh, displacement increment, then this total displacement is explicitly obtained using the displacement increment. Then we have a, a bunch of info lines printed, like the execution time and plug time, and that's it. The uh, solver is done. Well, uh, don't, don't forget that we are in a time loop, so whenever the uh, run, when, whenever the runtime is uh, reached to the actually reached to the end, the solution is done. So the, 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 if you want to have uh, so we we have only the uh, we have only on, I think nine minutes left. We sit on arm for nine minutes as well. Okay, don't worry, you will make it to your coffees. Uh, the, 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 the main takeaway I wanted you to take, sorry, I was in a rush and I contradicted myself. The plan was that you are, uh, as, uh, well, hypothetically, you are basic users and I want to show you the basics, but it, it didn't go that way. Uh, the, the main takeaway I want you to take is that you create an object, whatever its name is, here it is solid, and do the method evolve, and that's it. That's very simple. Using this, you, ju you just create an an created an object here and then call the method evolve. That's simple. Uh, however, the solids for form code itself, so th this was just a demonstration. The solids for form code itself use a method, uh, use a, uh, let me show you actually. The only difference between the solids for foam.c and our code is this line, where you see that the auto pointer physics model object is runtime selectable instead of being hard coded. It is runtime selectable. Uh, and the way it is read is from the, you remember that uh, in the other terminal, in our constant, we had physics properties. In the physics properties, we specify what type our physics is. So this is the difference between solids for foam and our code. Solids for foam actually reads the uh, your physics model and then goes to, for example, in, in this case, it is solid, and then it looks for solid properties and inside in, in, inside solid properties, it looks for the keyword solid model. However, we actually hard coded this into our code. So that's the so uh, that's the only difference. Obviously, the the way solid for form is implemented is better because it's more flexible. You have the runtime. Uh, you have the runtime selection. Uh, yeah, runtime selection, uh, runtime selection embedded in your code. But uh, my goal was to introduce you to just the, the very lower level of the solids for form, and not to introduce you to the runtime selection. Uh, we have six minutes left, and what I will do is just in uh, one minute I will. Uh, announce our next event. Uh, our group plans to, our group, maybe in co collaboration with other groups, plans to run an open foam uh, training between mid November and, uh, I mean, in, in the autumn, whether it is in November or October. 
definitely after September. Uh, things that we will cover are C++ as a whole, from, from the fundamentals to the data structure, uh, object, orient object orientation and the related concepts. And then, the, the, uh, actually, the, the next level of the workshop, as you see in, I mean, the next level of our training session, so-called Open Form Catalyst, is getting into the uh, Open Form specific objects, like uh, algorithm objects, mesh objects, discretization classes, boundary conditions, and so on. And finally, the goal is uh, for you or for attendees, for provisional attendees, to write a solver from scratch. Like you start from a, you have a, actually you have an open form installed and you want to start solving a new problem with a new physics just from scratch, from an empty file. How, how do you do that? This is the goal of us. Uh, we thought that in our group, we thought that there is a gap in open form community in terms of teaching uh, open form specific C++ rather than general C++. Well, uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the uh, financial support from Science Foundation Ireland, Bakert and University College Dublin. Uh, finally, we have three minutes left, three or four, well, three, let's say. I would like, uh, well, uh, if, if, you, if you can actually scan this QR code and just give me a feedback for the next one minute, it would be great. If you want to contact us about any of the things that I presented, uh, you can contact us through hello at tensorfield.com. And if uh, your question is very, very solid for form specific, you can contact Philip as well, the main contributor of uh, solid for form. Well, thank you so much, and you're more than, uh, I would be more than happy for you to scan the QR code and uh, submit your opinion. Thank you.